Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards present Lionel Barrymore, starring as Scrooge in Charles Dickens' classic story, A Christmas Carol, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. It's a great pleasure for Hallmark Cards and the fine stores that feature them to bring you our own beloved Hallmark Hall of Fame host, Lionel Barrymore, in his traditional interpretation of Scrooge in Charles Dickens' immortal Christmas classic, A Christmas Carol. We consider it a great privilege to bring this special program into your homes this Christmas season, and so the story will be presented without interruptions. May you enjoy it to the fullest. Probably we've all said at one time or another, wouldn't it be grand if we could keep the spirit of Christmas all through the year? Not the mad rush, but that part that's all aglow with kindness and good cheer. Some folks do. And the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards has a gift for you that's about the handiest help I know to keep Christmas thoughtfulness in your mind the whole year through. It's the Hallmark date book for 1954, and it's yours absolutely free as a gift from that store. This little book, small enough to fit in purse or billfold, has a calendar page for every month of the year with ample room on each date to write in the names of folks you want to remember on that day. There's a space for addresses, too, as well as lots of room for your Christmas card list. The Hallmark date book actually is your social secretary throughout the year, reminds you of birthdays, anniversaries, and all those occasions when you want your friends to know you care. Your store has this Hallmark date book for you, a kindly remembrance that's yours for the asking from the folks whose business it is to help you be kind all through the year. And now Mr. Barrymore stars in our transcribed presentation, A Christmas Carol on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Once upon a Christmas Eve, in a dank and dismal street, there stood the counting house of Scrooge and Marley. Now, that was how the sign read over the door, but as a matter of fact, Marley was long dead, and old Scrooge simply would not pay the few shillings to have a new sign put up. It was cold, bleak, biting weather, and as old Scrooge poured over his cash books, he could hear his clerk stepping about in the dreary cell where he worked. Cricket? Bob Cricket! Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Shall I hire a fiddler to accompany your dancing? Or will you perhaps do a bit of the work for which I'm paying you? I was trying to warm my hands and feet, Mr. Scrooge. Yes, sir. There's no fire in my stove. And there'll be no pay in your pocket either, if you're not careful, sir. You understand? Yes, Mr. Scrooge. Sorry, Mr. Scrooge. But Scrooge himself was quite comfortable, thank you. For beside his desk there glowed a cheery bucket of coals. Yes, and he had need for that warmth far more than did poor Bob Cratchit. The coal within old Scrooge was like an iceberg itself. It was a coal that crackled with the freezing glance of his eyes, that nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his old cheeks, and turned his thin lips blue. It was a coal that did not thaw even at the sight of his own nephew. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Huh? What's that? I said Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug. <laughs> Christmas, a humbug. You don't mean that, Uncle. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? <laughs> You're poor enough. <laughs> what right have you to be dismal? You're rich enough. Ah, uh, humbug. Oh, come now. Don't be cross, Uncle. If I had my way, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding. Buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Oh, now, now, Uncle. Now, you keep Christmas your own way and let me keep it mine. But you don't keep it. Well, very well. Let me leave it alone, then. Merry Christmas. <laughs> much good it's ever done you. Oh, but it has, Uncle. It's the time of much happiness, and my family and I want to share it with you. Come, say you'll dine with us tomorrow night. <laughs> good afternoon, nephew. We ask nothing of you, Uncle, except to see you. And what better time than Christmas? Good afternoon. 
<laughs> Very well, but remember, if you change your mind... Good afternoon. A Merry Christmas, Uncle, and a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Old Scrooge had hardly gotten back to his cash books when the front door banged again. This time there were two visitors. How do you do, sir? Have we the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. I keep his name over the door, but he died seven years ago this very night. But come, what do you want? At this glad season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, we desire to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute. Poor? Are there no prisons? Oh, indeed, yes, sir. And the workhouses, are they still in operation? Both very busy, sir. It is on behalf of those who live in fear of prison and workhouse that we are endeavouring to raise a fund, sir. Uh, How much shall we put you down for? Nothing. Ah, you wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Mr. Scrooge. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support prisons and workhouses, and those who are badly off must go there. But many would rather die, sir. Then it's not for me to keep them from it, to die if they will, and so decrease the surplus population. Mr. Scrooge. Gentlemen, I don't interfere in other people's business, for mine occupies me constantly. And so, good day, gentlemen. Good day. Ah, that was old Scrooge to the life. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, covetous old skinflint. And so on that Christmas Eve came the hour for old Scrooge to lock up and go home. He ate his usual dreary dinner and then climbed the dreary stairs to his own dreary rooms. He closed the door and locked it. And then double locked it. What was that? Chains? The rattling of chains? Bah, a mug. But was it? The chains clanked up those same stairs which Scrooge had just climbed. Step by step by step. Then they were at the door which Scrooge had just locked. And then... Uh, uh. Ebenezer Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge. Who who are you? What do you want with me? Oh, what? Your name? I, uh, uh, I didn't catch it. In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Impossible. He never wore chains, no, nor a cash box padlocked around his neck, nor ledgers fettered to his wrist. Oh, why do you doubt your senses? Because of a... uh, Some little thing makes them liars and cheats. You may only be a disorder of the stomach, an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. There's more gravy than grave about you. Oh, no. a Please don't do that. No, 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 wait. I crave your pardon, ghost. I meant no harm. Do you believe in me or not? If it'll give you some small comfort, yes, I, I do. But why must spirits walk the earth? And why do they come to me? It is required of every man that if his spirit goes not forth to others while in life, it is condemned to do so after death. (laughs) I wear the chain which I forged in life, even as you do now, Ebenezer, even as you do now, now forge for your own damnation. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 Jacob. Speak comfort to me, Jacob. I have none to give. My doom weighs too heavily upon me. Life's opportunities escape me. Now I know no rest, no peace, only remorse. Remorse? 
boss. But, but you were always a good man of business, Jason. Oh, no. prisoner. Oh, please don't do that. Mankind was my business. The common welfare, charity, mercy, forbearance, all were my business. Hearken to me, Ebenezer Scrooge. I am, I am, I am. Go on, go on. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance of escaping my fate. I bring you hope, Ebenezer. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> you were always a good friend of mine, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Three, Jacob? Expect the first tonight when the bell tolls one. Expect the second tomorrow night at the same hour. And the third upon the next night. Well, if it must be, I... But suppose... No you... more. I cannot linger. Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake, you remember what has passed between us. Jacob. Jacob. Old Scrooge jumped up from his chair and stared wildly about. Everything was exactly as before. The door still locked, and the fire still glowed cozily within the grate. I must have dozed off. Yes, that's, that's it. <laughs> A dream and nothing more. But once he laid his troubled head upon the pillow, Scrooge remembered the ghostly warning. There would be another visitor when the bell tolled one. The hour itself, and nothing else. <laughs> I am, sir. I am. That's my name. But, but, uh, who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Huh? Long past? No, Ebenezer, your past. Ah, mine? Humbug, why mine? If you must be devil some honest mortal, pray go elsewhere, sir. Rise and walk with me. What? I, with no more clothes than the nightgown and cap, Come, I want... we will go out this window. Now, now, spirit, please. I'm but mortal. I haven't got wings. Then bear but a touch of my hands thus. Look down, Ebenezer, what do you see? Uh, a schoolroom and a child reading at a desk. A solitary child, neglected by his friend. Aye, you remember him, Scrooge? I do, I do, I do. One Christmas time, he sat there reading of Alibaba and Robinson Crusoe and the, and the wonders he should see when he grew up. Yes, I was that child's spirit. I wish... No, it's too late now. You wish what? Nothing, nothing. Uh, there was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should have liked to give him something. That's all. Come, let us see another Christmas. Look again, Ebenezer. Do you know this warehouse? Yes, it is. It is the very place... Well, still a boy. I was apprenticed here. Let us go in. Oh, there! Ebenezer! Dick! Why, well, it's... It's Fezziwig, bless his heart. It's Fezziwig, alive again. <laughs> no more work tonight, my boys. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Time for the fiddler and a bit of food. Oh, dear old Fezziwig. He was a kind master to all of us. A fiddler and a bit of food. What's that to merit such praise? A poor Christmas that costs but a few pounds. A few pounds. Oh, but the happiness it brought us all. As great as if it had cost a fortune. Uh, you sigh. There's something... Nothing in particular. But I should like to say a word or two to my clerk just now. 
Well, that's a whole... My time grows short. One shadow more. Spirit, show me no more. I can't bear it. Remove me and then take me home. Ah. Scrooge was tired to complete exhaustion. And furthermore, he was back in his own bedroom. And then, in another moment, he was in bed and fast asleep. Huh? One o'clock. And yet it's still night? What? Have I slept the clock around from night to day and night again? Mr. Scrooge, you want, huh? Well, well, he's, uh, he's gone out. He's not at home. Ebenezer Scrooge, reach out your hand. You are the ghost of Christmas present. I am. Come, we must go. Whose house is this, Spirit? What poor people live in such a shabby hovel? Surely they must be some unfortunate with no man to provide. He provides as best he can on the little that you pay him. Did I pay him? Why, is this Bob Cratchit? Come, let us go in. Belinda, Martha, set the table, my dear. It's all but done, Mother. And so is the goose. All we want now is your dear father and Tiny Tim. He's coming now, Mother. And there's Tiny Tim on his shoulder. Hello, hello. We're home, everyone. Bob. Father. We're home, we're home. <laughs> Down you go, my boy. And here's your stool. Belinda, take your father's muffler and Martha, put the pot on the hob. Yes, Mother. Bob. Yes, my dear. Was the church service too long for little Tim? Did he behave? As good as gold and better. He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple and it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Poor boy. Poor boy. Father, how do you like the table? I Why do you turn away, Ebenezer? It's a hard sight to bear, Spirit. Bob Cratchit never told me that Tiny Tim was lame. A cripple must hobble about on a crutch. And now, my dears, a toast. I give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. He, indeed. How should we drink to such a hard, stingy, and unfeeling man? My dear, it's Christmas Day. A time for charity, even to Mr. Scrooge. And so, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to him and to us all. Merry Christmas. And what do you say, Tiny Tim? God bless us, everyone. Spirit. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat by the chimney corner and a crutch without an owner. Oh, no, no, kind spirit. But... Say he'll be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. And so, as you once said, decrease the surplus population. I take it back. I take it back, spirit. Every word of it. All. Oh, uh, my time with you is ended. Wait, spirit. Wait, please. One moment now. Just farewell, a... Ebenezer. Farewell. Scrooge was once more in his own bedroom. As he looked about him, he beheld a solemn phantom, draped all in black and hooded, coming toward him like a mist along the ground. Ebenezer Scrooge. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? Oh, Ebenezer Scrooge. I fear you more than any specter I've yet met. Come with me. No, 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 not this place, spirit. Let's go quickly. Stay. 
What do you see? A maze of weeds and shaggy trees and stone slabs tilting toward the ground. Here lie the forgotten, the unloved, the unmourned. Look down. Read the words upon this stone. Ebenezer Scrooge. No, spirit, no, no. I'm not the man I was. Good spirit, tell me I may sponge away the writing on this terrible stone and say that I, I may yet change these shadows by an altered life. How will you alter it? I'll honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all here. I, I live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Now this I promise, spirit. I promise it. I do. I promise. Scrooge was on his knees. He held up his hands to the ghost in one last prayer for mercy. And as he did so, the phantom's hood and dress shrank, then collapsed and dwindled down into a bed <laughs> Ha, ha, a bed post. Nothing more. I am safe in my own room. It was all a dream. Look, it's daylight. And church bells. Can it be Sunday? Hello down there. Hey, you, boy. Yes, sir? Tell me, my fine fella, what's today? Today, sir? Why, Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Then I haven't missed it. <laughs> boy. Uh, uh, do you know the poultry shop at the corner? I should think I do, sir. Ah, oh, an intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Uh, and do they still have the, the prize turkey in the window? You mean the little one? No, no, the big one. It's hanging there now, sir. Oh, <laughs> good. Now, go and tell them to fetch it here, my boy. Come back with the turkey and I'll give you a shilling. Come back in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. He shan't know who sent it. <laughs> and Tiny Tim will find it twice his own size. Wonderful day. Wonderful. And now, now to get dressed and be doing. <laughs> hurried out into the street, and to everyone he passed, he smiled and bowed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. A Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Merry madam. Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Yes, yes. People shook their heads Merry in Christmas. glad amazement. What had come over old Mr. Scrooge? And then, at last, the door of his nephew's house. Uncle! Uncle Scrooge. Your own uncle, indeed, nephew. Did you not invite me to Christmas dinner? Why, yes, uncle. But yesterday... Yesterday I was a fool. Today's Christmas, and I'll keep it with you and your dear family. A very merry Christmas, Fred. Greetings, I see you, and we hope to make you on the way. Greetings, my dear, and we hope to make and so Christmas Day passed most happily. But the next morning... Ah, the next morning, Scrooge was early at the office. Nine o'clock, and no Bob Cratchit. A quarter past, no Bob. Scrooge wound his watch and frowned and waited. Cratchit? Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Step this way, sir, if you please. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. And now, what do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir. I, I am behind my time, I'm afraid. I should think you are. But it's only once a year, sir. It won't be repeated. Indeed it won't. Indeed it won't. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. Therefore, therefore, credit. Yes, sir? I am about to raise your salary. Mr. Scrooge, you don't mean it. Don't I? Ha-ha! 
A Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas than I've given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. We'll discuss your affairs this very afternoon, but first, first make up the fires and buy yourself a scuttle of coal. And do it before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. Or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. At this Christmas season, our friendly thoughts go out to you who have been with us so often during the past year. Tonight, I bring you Christmas greetings from the makers of Hallmark Cards, from the fine stores where Hallmark Cards are sold, and from all of us on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. May your Christmas be merry with laughter and cheer, bright as the Christmas star. The friendliest greetings from all of us here to you, wherever you are. Merry Christmas, everybody. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Thank you, thank you, Frank. Thank you very much. And I want to add my own wishes to all our friends who are here with us each week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. I hope your Christmas will be bright and shining and that every mail will bring you new reason to be thankful for the friendship of your fellow men. And I hope that every time you open a Christmas card this week, it will remind you that friendship, kindness, and love are manifestations of that first lesson taught to mankind by a tiny babe who slept in a manger many, many years ago, and that you'll offer a little prayer then and there that the universal hope of peace on earth, goodwill to men, will soon become a reality in this world of ours. In the words of Tiny Tim, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Also invited to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television every Sunday starring Miss Sarah Churchill. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer-director is William Frug. Dickens, A Christmas Carol was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Featured in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Ann Whitfield, Byron Kane, Lamont Johnson, Herb Butterfield, Polly Bear, Joseph Kearns, Ted DeCorsia, Lawrence Dobkin, John Stevenson, Richard Beals, and Stuffy Singer. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Cole Porter musical Kiss Me Kate, starring Catherine Grayson, Howard Keel, and Ann Miller. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time, when we present Mr. Edward Arnold, starring in the role of Henry Berg. On January 3rd, we'll tell you an exciting story about the famous cowboy Tom Mix, the week following a true story about William Allen White on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.